Hello everybody. Hello. Hello everyone. This is Thomas. And today we're gonna to do a mock test. Yep. You happy to do that Thomas? Yep. yep. Alright? Yeah. Do you wanna say hello to all your fans? Hi. To my family, who will watch this. And many millions more, yep. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. There is a fly in this car. Yep. I'm gonna open the window slightly and hopefully it will fly out. Um, so yep. let's hope. That's not going to badger us too much. So, Thomas, you're quite a good standard of driving. You've been having lessons with me for a long time, haven't you? Over a year, almost two years. Two years? Oh, okay. Long time. I thought it was almost two years. Could be. Yes, yeah, feels feels a long time. Mm. Right, now the way we do this, we're going to do a mock test today and you're going to pick a number between 2 and 28. Pick a number. 25. 25. Seven years and I'm in that age. So we're going to be following um, a, a mock test route in Kettering and it's route number 25. I don't know if this will come up on the camera but I'll try and show it and see if that <clears throat> it's very much uh, it's kind of like an urban route yeah there's not much countryside in that are you happy to do that route today sure yeah. okay so we're going to be treating it like a proper test do you want to talk about mistakes on the way halfway through or at the end at the end at the end all right then so uh, for the purposes of the video I may be voice overing the video of where the mistakes might be yeah. and I may even be using one of those score systems that I've seen on other channels and I thought that was quite good and I thought I want to do that. Right let's try and keep that out of the way of the camera over here somewhere. Are we good there? Yeah. Okay Thomas I'm going to go into examiner mode now. Okay, you'll be following the sat nav. So when you're ready, yep. um, just follow the sat nav. Yep. Uh, and signs or my directions. You will arrive at your destination at 6.51 p.m. So a lovely little roundabout here by Thomas. He's checked, it's safe, he's done a mirror check and a left signal to leave and he's kept to his lane. So good job Thomas on that one. Oh, is she, is she, not, is she yeah. not saying? No, she's, she's not talking. Not talking. Cool. There we go. Should be okay now. She was talking about that. Yeah, she. What's happened is, for some reason, the voice has been turned off. I might have done it previously. Yeah. I can't remember, but the voice is turned off at the moment. Yeah. But it's turned back on now, so it should be okay. okay. Now, at the next roundabout, um, Thomas is going to be waiting for some traffic to pass. Now what happened here is um, a blue car was coming round the roundabout and Thomas moved off before the blue car had totally cleared the front of our vehicle. It's always a bit risky on this roundabout to do that because even if, there are, if they are on the inside lane they can still come across to Pitchley Road which is where the black car there has gone. So we've moved off. You can see the blue car just passing us now, but the car hadn't passed us as we were moving off. And at this moment, um, Thomas is catching up with the blue car on the dual carriageway, and I would be very reluctant to do that, especially because the blue car was a signaling left uh, for quite a while there, as if he wanted to come back to the left lane. Corbin. 
So Thomas does really well on the roundabout and he comes round and he's good mirrors and good signals. And he comes onto the dual carriageway, sticking to the left joining lane. Um, the only thing I would recommend to him, which is what I mentioned later, is just maybe a few more mirror checks here to see what's going on. Just coming up on the left there is a garage and there's a white car trying to emerge out of the slip road. Now I did notice here that the white car did break and allow Thomas to pass. I mean, in theory we've got um, priority anyway, but um, I don't think Thomas really planned for that. There was no mirror check-in in case he needed to change lanes or in case the white car didn't stop. So I was a little bit surprised at that and I did mention that later on. It does mention Junction 7 on the previous side, yeah, I realise that. But, uh, After 1.6 miles, take the exit 7, A43, towards Kettering. Now I'll pause the video here for a second because something's about to happen. On the left is a white car trying to emerge from the slip road and Thomas hasn't planned for this one either. Now this is gonna backfire on him a little bit because we do run into a bit of trouble um, getting past. He does move over to the, to the second lane to give the white car a little bit of room, but it's all a bit too late and it has called, caused quite a bit of awkwardness on the road. Um, the white car had to break even before he could come on. So, uh, I've had to give him a serious fault for this. Maybe a bit more planning and he would have eased off the gas a bit sooner. Uh, or maybe even looked to move over to the right hand lane if there was an availability to do that. When you pull off from these lights on this roundabout, always have a glance to the right looking for emergency vehicles or an idiot that's just jumped the red light. Thomas didn't do this, so I would probably mention that to him in the future. I think I did mention that to him. Um, always a good idea, because you never know who's coming through that red light, and it, I've seen it many times, people just jumping straight through them. So turning right on this roundabout, Thomas has forgotten his signal. Um, a right signal here would be very beneficial to other road users and uh, we are turning right on a roundabout.
Take the exit, A6003. And ideally at this point we should be signalling left to leave the roundabouts. Um, very quick mirror check that. Uh, but a left signal did go on in the end. It was late, but better late than never. After 400 yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. Then, at the end of the road, turn right. possible, can we just move forward a bit, just so we're not near this kind of car? Just maybe a little bit further, somewhere about now would be really great. Uh oh, yeah. There we go, thank you. It's just because we were narrowing the road there and now we're not narrowing it, so yeah. Is that alright? Yeah. Um, I thought what we might do, I know we said we were going to recap afterwards, but maybe we should recap now. Okay. Well, I've got to remember everything. <laughs> sure. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Otherwise, it's, it'll seem a long time ago, these errors. Yeah. Well, how do you think you're getting on so far? I think there was a mistake on the A14 where I was, going, I was carrying on and then that white car came down the set road. Correct, yeah. Um, so, what, what, was your, what was your issue there, do you think? The white car came on and yeah. I was about to go straight for it. Yeah, so you needed to plan ahead, yeah. maybe? Yeah. Because we had an on-ramp coming on, didn't we? We had a slip road on and things could happen. It was quite busy on the right as well, wasn't it? For the um, lane next to you. So we had to really plan, well, are we going to move over? Are we going to slow down? What's going to happen there? And it was just really lack of planning, I think. And I had to intervene in the end and say, well, let's do something. Come over to the island and uh, just come over to the island. Yeah, you did it eventually. We did come over. I don't think it really made much difference at that point, <laughs> to be fair, because it was all a bit late, wasn't it? You know, and we were waiting. I was waiting for you to to, to respond to it, but you didn't. But to be fair, you have got priority on the A14, but most people do kind of give way to oncoming cars or at least allow them on. Not everybody does, of course, but um, that's the expectation on the A14. All right. So let's take it from the top, shall we? Now, when you moved off initially, I didn't see a blind spot check. Oh, I might. I might. You might have forgotten that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the I first thing. I, I thought I did it. Well, we'll soon find out when we look back on the video. But I, I do remember looking at you very closely and thinking, oh, I don't think you've done the blind spot check. Um, a lot of your driving's okay. It's a bit. I do find it a little bit urgent sometimes. What do you think? Do you feel? Yeah. Do you think it's a bit quick? It is a bit quick sometimes. Um, Maybe I'm in a rush. Yeah, it's like, it, there, there's urgent and then there's urgent, isn't there? And I think maybe you're just a little bit too urgent. You know, they do say you you need to drive in a business-like manner when you're driving. It's like people say we should drive like we're late for an appointment, but we can't break the law. But you're driving a little bit faster than that, I think, or a little bit more urgent. It's not even faster, it's uh, more urgent than that coming up to things and stopping and whatnots. Yeah. Um, mirrors is your biggest thing, I think, at the moment. One of your biggest things, anyway. Just mirror checking before braking. Yeah. Um, left mirror check. Sometimes you're doing it on the roundabout, sometimes you're not. When we came up to the Tesco's roundabout, there was a blue car on your right. Do you remember that car? No. Okay. Well, there was a blue car on your right on the roundabout. As we were coming off the roundabout, um, the the car was in front of you at that point, wasn't it? Well, let's let's go back a step. I've I've missed a step out. When you came on to the Tesco's roundabout, there was a blue car coming round, and 
you, that's why we have to start now. You'll never, if you think you won't remember it now, imagine if you, in another half an hour. Yeah. All right, there was a blue car coming round the roundabout. The blue car was on the inside lane. You, you proceeded onto the roundabout. I wouldn't have advised that, to be fair, because the blue car could have come over to the left and went towards Pikesley Road. You know where that is, don't you? Yeah. The first exit that we were crossing. I would have waited a little bit longer for that blue car. I thought it was a gap. I thought it was just a, a bit of a gap. Yeah, there may have been a gap, but you know what they do on the roundabout? They come round the roundabout and then they come across. They slingshot off in front of us into the road next to us. Yeah. And it happens all the time. So what you've got to do is you've got to make sure that you're satisfied that that car coming round that bend isn't going to slingshot off into Pikesley. Yeah. And you pulled out a little bit early and that car could have come over or wanted to come over into Pikesley. Now luckily it didn't and it wanted to go into the same exit as where we were going. So the car came round and was on the right hand lane. Now if I remember correctly, excuse me, <coughs> if I remember correctly what happened next is that you caught up with the car. The car was in the right hand lane. We was here, the car was there, but we caught up with the car and I was a little bit worried you're going to overtake the car. Personally I'd have given that car a lot of space because we don't know what that person wants to do. But anyway, we did catch up with the car pretty quickly and then we kind of matched the car on the next roundabout and that, and that was the car, you know when you change lanes a bit further on, that was the car that was holding back for you, the blue car, remember it now. You said, oh I've got to change lanes, I've got to move over. And you did do good, good ops there to be fair, you yeah. did really good observations and then you did come over so but it was the same car it was just a, i just felt that really we should have given that car a little bit more room and maybe waited for it to pass a little bit further before before you pulled out on the roundabout that's all it wasn't a big deal or nothing but it was something maybe for safety reasons that that we that you should have considered so coming up to the roundabout we were turning right weren't we fifth exit um Yeah, no, we're going down the A14 oh, at that time. I thought it was on my own. Um, yeah, I don't really remember what happened on that roundabout, do you? Did you give signals? I'm sure you did. Yeah. And then we gave a left signal and then we left. And then we went on to the A14. Um, I think the A14 was more or less okay. Is that where we overtook something and came back again, or was that before the recording started? I don't remember. <laughs> so I don't remember either. Oh no, that was the bus, wasn't it, when we were coming down the hill? Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Okay, so we came along the A14, um, and then I think that was okay. And then we left into Junction Seven, and we were trying to work out the route then, wasn't we? Where, where we, we were going to go? And to be fair, I think in a driving test, if they're coming that way they normally give you a really good heads up as to where you're going and, and sometimes even what lanes to choose. I've known that to happen. But we went to the A43, which was at lane one or two, and I think you did that. Although you, you really should have signaled left as you were passing the A14 exit across the bridge. And you did give a left signal, but it was at the end, just, to, just before you left. Do you remember that? So. Yeah, ideally. Um, but then we went down that road. Nothing happened down there, did it? Down the A43. We're down the A43 now. Uh, we went under the bridge. And then we were turning right to Kettering in the A6003. And the sat nav was saying you needed to signal right on the approach. Yeah. Um, you may have remembered that on the way round I believe and then as we were passing the getting to next exit you did signal left eventually and then we came over and then we went into the full the 30 zone at quite high speed 30, 30. yeah you were doing you were definitely going too fast I waited for you to slow down but you didn't I did, to notice it. yeah but did you notice the sign you said you, you didn't what, notice what the, it. What the 30 yeah I don't think I did I think I missed it. 
Well, well you must have done if you were speeding. But I just wondered if you if you did see it, but just didn't kind of acknowledge it. Uh, okay, so you were doing. I had to intervene there, didn't I? I had to yeah. say, "Can you slow down to 30? Examiner would do the same thing because you're just breaking the law now, doing 38 in 30. But these, you know, that's what we're that's what we're here for, isn't it? Teach. Yeah. Teach to learn. That's what we go to school for, as the song goes. Exactly. Yeah. Being yeah. a school boy. Mm-hmm. For me. Yeah. And then we turn left, and then we turn right. Um, more convenient to park away from park cars if possible. Yeah. And here we are. So how how do you feel about that so far? Good. Like I said, a few mistakes, but yeah, I can rigid, redeem myself. If we if we round it up, let's round it up a little bit. Let's take away the urgency yeah. a little bit. So a bit more. Let's approach junctions maybe. A little bit slower, so yeah. you get a bit more time to, to lurk and assess. Yeah? yeah. So we'll take away a little bit of urgency, particularly on the approach to junctions. Try and remember mirrors. When do you need to use your mirrors? On like roundabouts, um, when you're going around the corner. Okay, so when you're changing speed, maybe? Yeah. If you're accelerating or decelerating? Yeah. And maybe when you're turning left or right, yeah. we'll use the mirrors and as part of your mirror signal maneuver routine. Yeah. Okay. So, why is it important to use mirrors? If you don't, then there's something back up, back up Like what? I don't know, like anything. So, if someone's close to you behind, yeah. and so, you need to brake, yeah. you need to be aware of how close they are. Yeah. What, if, what happens if they're really close to you? Go straight in the back here. Yeah. So what would you do if you needed to break and you looked in your mirror and there's someone really close to you? What would you do? I have no idea. Break sooner? Yeah, yeah. Break sooner rather than later. Yeah. Give them lots of warning, lots of heads up. Yeah. No way. Okay, so we look in mirrors well before signals, just so that you know whether to break sooner or not, or whether it's safe to do whatever you want to do. Okay, so so far we've got one serious, and that's for the not planning ahead on the dual carriageway. How do you feel about that? Fine, it's just a big mistake. All right. So maybe next time when there's an on ramp, we'll plan ahead. Yeah. Plan ahead. Okay. Shall we carry on with the sure. with the route? Are you happy to carry on? Yeah, sure. All right. So we're going to keep following the sat nav. I'll go back into examiner mode. Yeah. I might do a bit of chit chat because I'm getting a, <laughs> I get very bored in examiner mode. You don't like um, not talking. No, I love talking. It's good to chat, isn't it? Yeah. Can we go? Yeah, of course. Yeah, whatever. Good. Good time spot check. I'm going to be quiet. Now. <laughs> so this is the end of part one of Thomas's mock test, and if you want to see part two, I will leave the link in the description. Please join us again for part two as it gets even more exciting.